Our next presenter, she's weaved between design and education and has discovered that smart is stupid, which appeals to me. I like this. Give it up, please, at night number 16 to Meg Jamison. Innovation. It's the buzzword of our time. But there's a problem. We aren't innovating. In 2009, for the first time in history, over 50% of U.S. patents were given to non-U.S. companies. And there's another problem with education. In 2013, U.S. students were compared with students from other countries, and we listed 35th on that list. So where am I going with this? Well, for me, um, this is a very personal story because my experience in education was one of deep struggle. For most of my life, I struggled with clinical depression, and school was a really hard thing for me. I couldn't understand, um, I couldn't understand why it was so hard, but um, for the longest time, I, I really struggled. And so design became a way for me to sort of to sort of get outside myself. And when I discovered design, this light bulb popped in my head. And so why does this matter to us, a group of creative professionals? Well, I think that the failures of our school system are enacted in our corporate environments every day. And the things that we learn in school really do affect how we act in the real world. And so now's as good as time of any to consider what we're teaching students in school. So basically, our model of education is centered around memorizing information. We're going to give you information, you're going to memorize it, you're going to recite it on a test, and you're going to move on. And it's really kind of pointless, because there's a huge disconnect for most students between what they're learning in school and the problems that they see in the real world. It doesn't make sense to most students. So I believe that there's another way of teaching, and another way of learning, and another way of thinking, where we combine the things, the information that we know, with the problems that we see. And this is where true innovation comes to fruition. So how do we do this? This is essentially design as a way of thinking and critical problem solving. And we do this, um, and or, well, how do we do this? Um, there's nothing that I've seen that makes me believe that more, new curriculum and more standards are going to solve the problem we're in. I don't believe in education reform. I believe in redesigning our environments to teach the values that we hope to teach to our students. And environments are powerful things. It's proven in studies that environments can literally change our neurology and change the way we think. So consider with me for a few, a few moments, a few environments. Think of your office, a coffee shop, a classroom, maybe the great outdoors. How do these environments change the way you think? Do they make you more creative? Maybe they make you less creative. And my interest is how can we craft our environments and our schools to be places that actually fuel the processes of innovation. So our future schools have four characteristics. First, they're highly exploratory. Imagine a vast landscape of varied topography. There are no walls, no standardized desks. Every pathway is a new adventure and every space is a new experience. Highly exploratory environments encourage our students to pique their own interests and to seek out new information. Second, our future schools are highly creative places. Imagine an artist studio with blank walls and empty canvas for all of your ideas. There's trace paper and colored pencils. Highly creative environments allow students to dream and imagine. Third, our future environments are hyper-customized. Imagine what you need to think creatively in your environment. It's there. Hyper-customized environments allow students to create their ideal learning situation. And fourth, our future environments are hyper-connected. Hyper Some people believe that the future of our world is 
is a virtual reality, but I believe it combines all the things we love in one space. So schools become epicenters for societies. They become community centers and centers for the arts. And when you combine all of these things, students begin to understand meaning and value in their education. So it's my greatest hope that by transforming our environments, we can transform the way that we think. And I truly believe that design is the key to saving our economy and saving our world. Because design has power. And I know this because design changed my life. Thank you.